Super Fun Stuff! Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. In today's video, we go back to the basics and make a mini using some of my favorite techniques. Recently, I've been doing a lot of videos trying new methods like the no-tan study or hand paint the Grisai method. Both of them were a fun experience and gave me a new look at mini's compositions. Well, my brain is exploding with new knowledge and I want to utilize everything we've learned to create a new epic mini and of course, show how we do it. So let's pick up some of those brain pieces and try something out. So what techniques are we going to use today? One thing that I really like that I haven't done in a while is lighting up Minnie's eyes. I first made videos describing this process over a year ago and I haven't touched it since. So the first thing we are going to do is go back to that. Next, I still really like the comic book feel of minis. It's a unique style that really spices up a mini versus a standard paint and highlight. To make a comic book feel, there's one thing that is very important, and that is the lining. Lining is where we take our black ink and draw slash outline the mini. It's one of the most gratifying parts of the process, so I definitely want to do that as well. Lastly, what about the colors? Here's where we're gonna keep it pretty simple and not go too crazy. We will do a transitional airbrush base color and some hand paint in smaller areas, a few washes, and some basic highlighting. Nothing too difficult, nothing too out of the ordinary, and something everyone can do pretty easily. For a lot of comic book styles in the past, I did block coloring. And I still like that approach, but this time I want to try to make things more transitional and see how things work out with the black lining. Taking all of that, let's paint one of the most basic, simple models out there, the Space Marine. Specifically, this is a newer Primaris Intercessor model. What's great about him is that he is a great mini for any level painter to paint. If you're starting out, his large areas, mostly one color color scheme, and many sharp, easy to highlight edges are a great way for you to learn a basic process. If you're an advanced painter, you can take the basics and spice them up by adding more details, more complex colors, adding lights, etc, etc. So Space Marine is the best all around mini to paint. I just don't like paying a ton of the same guy, and space rings aren't too bad, but I'm looking at you, Tyranids. So let's get started. First, let's go over all the tools and paints we're going to use today. First, we have the X-Acto knife. We have the handy drill with the 2mm drill bit, a twist hand drill using a 0.5mm drill bit, small wire snips, fiber optic strands, and you can buy these individually, but I think the cheapest method is to buy one of those worthless toys that come with a ton of strands. For this work, we're only using them to transfer light for looks and not for data, so you don't need some high-end fiber optic strands. Next, we need some pre-wired 0402 LEDs, some toothpicks, which these things are one of my best friends in the world, four small neodymium magnets, glue, conductive tape, a CR2016 battery, a cup of water for cleaning your brushes, paper towels for drying brushes, tin foil for your paints, or you can use a wet palette if you have it, an airbrush system, and it's okay if you don't have this, but it does make the process quicker. Paint brushes. I recommend two brushes in particular, a round size one brush and a size zero liner brush. These will be your bread and butter brushes for this process. It's good to have other types of brushes for other things too, like dry brushing or larger area brushes, but for the most part, we can use these two brushes. And now to the paints. Let's go down the line of what colors I used. I used mostly the Army Painter line with a few Vallejo paints. Here's what I used for this. From Army Painter, I used Angel Green, Green Skin, Goblin Green, and these are going to be the main colors for our Space Marine, Dragon Red, Pure Red, Lava Orange, Demonic Yellow, White, Skeleton Bone, Barbarian Flesh, Leather Brown, Fur Brown, Gun Metal, Plate Mail Metal, Greedy Gold, a Mid Brown Wash, a Flesh Wash, and a Dark Tone Wash. From Vallejo, I use a white primer and game color black. And lastly, always make sure you paint with a lot of light. And if you're using your airbrush, do it in a well-ventilated area. Before we start painting, let's make a path for our lighting for the eyes. It's always a good idea to plan these things out in advance in case something goes wrong. And, you know, that never happens to me. With our Space Marine, he has thick body parts and a fairly straight pose. This makes things much easier. If you have a mini that has thinner legs or a crazier pose, then you're gonna have a trickier time, and most likely you'll have to do some repair work. For example, I did this a while back for both Gene Stealer Cult Acolyte and a regular Gene Stealer. Guess which one was easier? Obviously the Acolyte. 
His body and legs were much larger to me to make larger holes, and his body was straighter to make more direct paths. And on top of that, he comes piece parted and his body was hollow. Looking at the regular jean stealer, he had the opposite problem. He had very thin legs and his body is contorted with lots of bends. And he's a solid piece. Well, this one was a two pieces, so a little bit better. When I did this guy, I had to make a series of holes to create a wire path. And when I was done, I had to fill slash fix a lot of spots. It was a bit of a nightmare, but it is possible. But both utilize a hole in the head where the LED sits and fiber optic strands to the eyes to propagate the light out better. We go into more detail in a second, but first let's go through how we will wire things to the body to hide the wires. How are we going to do this? Well, we need to develop a best route plan. There are several things to consider. What is the largest path? What is the straightest path? And how does it connect to the base? So let's look at our space marine. One plus with this model is that the back is a separate part that has a large cavity in it. This means we don't have to drill anything through the body and it's done for us, so that's awesome. The legs, however, are solid, and we have two options, the left leg or the right leg. Let's go through our questions real quick and see which leg we should pick. What is the largest path? Well, both legs are about the same size, so that's pretty easy. What is the straightest path? This is a bit of a toss-up too. Both are slightly bent. I guess the right leg is a little bit straighter one, but only by a little. Now, how does it connect to the base? Now this is important because our point of contact needs to be flush with the base, or we'll be showing the wires. Well, here's where we have a discrepancy. The right leg is a little straighter, but has a bent foot where the heel is up. This only gives us a small portion of the toe where we can make a route for our wire. The left foot is completely flat, so we have a much larger area to make a hole from the foot. Because of this, I decide to go to the left leg. Now to drill our hole, the left leg is slightly bent. Unfortunately, we can't drill a single straight line to get to the body. Instead, we approach the hole from the two sides, one from the bottom of the foot and the other from the torso. We will meet at the knee and make a slight V-shaped path down his leg. Using our handy drill, we make a two millimeter hole and attempt to meet at the knee. Here are some additional tips on doing this. Drill slow. If you go too far or off center, you may damage the model and have to repair it. Don't over drill your holes. You want to make your route a continuous line with no extra branches. If you over drill, it's going to be more difficult to snake the wire through. Also, you can measure the distance of your hole just by stopping in between and seeing how far the drill bit goes through. It's that simple. Now we have our leg route. For the body, like I said earlier, it's wide open. So that part is done for us. Now for the trickier part, the head. For a normal two-eyed head, we'll make three holes. One larger hole from the bottom of the head and two small holes for the eyes. The larger hole will be drilled from the bottom of the neck to the middle of the head where his brain would sit. His eye holes will be drilled from the outside in and connect to the hole in the middle of his head. You drill the larger hole first using a two millimeter bit and the handy drill. Measure the depth every so often to make sure you don't go too far. For the eye holes, we use a small hand drill with a 0.5 millimeter drill bit. I start in the middle of the eye and start drilling towards the middle of his brain. When you drill the eye holes, you know when you get to the end when you feel a slight pop. This is when you hit the larger cavity where the brain sits. Make sure you clear out any excess debris from the eye hole as well. I use a toothpick so I don't scratch anything. To make sure you have a clear path, put your LED inside and test it with a battery. If you see light from the eyes, you're good to go. If you don't, you either didn't drill far enough or you missed a brain hole. Verifying everything is correct is key before painting. I wire my LED through the legs and into the head to test it out. Here you can see everything worked out and you can see light from the eyes. Hallelujah. Now we start to paint using our airbrush. This time I will keep the pieces separate and assemble them later. I want to make sure I don't get paint on the LED and if I get paint in the holes, I can clean them out prior to wiring. I use toothpicks that are about the same size as a two millimeter hole to hold my stuff. I decide to go to a Dark Angels type of color scheme with shades of green. So nothing fancy here, I use a cardboard box and a smaller empty box to hold the parts. Thank you Girl Scouts for the Thin Mint. First I apply my white primer. Next, I apply my Angels Green all over the mini. I move to green skin and apply that at a 45 degree angle all around the part. I then use a Goblin Green with a little bit of demonic yellow. I do this at about a 70 degree angle and hit only the very top. 
This airbrush technique is widely used in a very simple approach for minis. It's nothing special and anyone can do it. So let's start to paint the details. I start with the head, and you can pick your own color scheme, but this is what I developed. I painted other non-green colors. I start to paint his face mask a skeleton bone. I then paint his neck black and his little face hose is silver. Now we're going to do some comic pre-lining. So what is this? When we paint minis at this scale, there are super small details. So tiny that if I hand lined them with black, they would look too big and imprecise. Instead, we can use a dark wash but be very selective where we apply it. I apply it only to the super small recesses and try not to over apply it and make stains. Instead of just using the washes for outlines, you can also use them to add a little color. I take my mid-brown wash and add a little color to the light colored mask. It gives a little bit more depth. Now I mix a little goblin green and skeleton bone and water it down to make a faint highlight. I go around all the edges. I put the head to the side and now focus on the body. I go in and first paint all my other colors. I use black for the joints, silver and red for the gun, gold for the accent parts, and a little leather brown on the back. I decide to paint one knee pad a checker pattern using skeleton bone. Now I take some of my dark washes and do some comic pre-lining. I apply it to small areas just like I did for the head. Now to the more fun part, the actual lining. In my previous videos I used a black ink, and it worked well. For this, I decided to try out the game color black paint as it's a little less runny. Use your liner brush and make sure the ink slash paint used is very thin. After inking, I apply some more light highlights on the green using goblin green and skeleton bone. Then I add highlights to the other colors like a red orange for the gun and a brighter silver for the silver. Now I go back to my lining brush and add more black ticks and damage marks. I take my time and add deliberate marks on areas. I like to do little tick marks and hash marks. I apply this all over the head and the back as well. To finish up the model, I paint a dark angel symbol on one shoulder. I hate water decals and they never look right to me, so I take my time and paint my own. On the other side, I add a red V on the shoulder. Red looks good with green as their complementary colors, plus it just feels right. Now we need to put it all together. I route the wire through his leg and glue his back on. I route the wire through the base and glue him on there too. If this main didn't have that slotted part, I probably would have finished the base prior to gluing, but whatever. Before I attach the head, I do one last check to make sure everything works. I glue the LED in the head and his head to the body. Make sure not to get glue on the LED itself as it will affect the light. For the fiber optics in the eye, I put a strand in the hole, bend it, and cut it slightly below the bend. Then I just shove the little piece in the hole. Usually the strand is just about the right size of the hole and won't fall out. But if it does, you can always add a little glue. And to finish this look, I base them. And that's all up to you. I just did a simple Martian gravel base with extra pillar I printed a while back and some various grasses. I always add a few pigments to the feet of the mini to portray what kind of surface they're on. This is more of a dry surface, so I use a reg pigment on his calves and feet. And the final step, which we probably should have done earlier, is to create the battery compartment underneath. Here we want to first make a spot for the battery. I found that a CR2016 battery fits all the bases and keeps them flush to the ground. Obviously, the larger the base, the more room you get to work with. I've seen some other methods of hiding the battery in the bases, like this one, but it's way too bulky and overly complicated. I rather use the KISS method of keeping it simple. After I make a spot for the battery, I glue in four small neodymium magnets. I glue in two on the bottom and two on the sides. What's interesting about these batteries is that the bottom is a negative and the top and side are positives. So we will utilize the side for the positive connection. For the magnets on the bottom, you may have to drill a small recess hole for the magnets to sit into. I get the magnets in and then add some conductive tape. I then place the wire on top of the conductive tape and another piece of tape on top of that. This sandwiches the connection and ensures it's a strong and tight connection. Push down on the tape all over and make sure it's pressed down everywhere. This tape isn't the stickiest, but putting pressure with your finger or a toothpick adheres it very well. For the side, I do the same thing. If you can get your lead on the top of the magnet and glued into place, you can skip the conductive tape, but it's really up to you. Now our battery is all hooked up, so let's see how he looks. And he looks absolutely amazing. I honestly don't know if I like the comic style painting or his eyes more. I think this gives a cool unique style and it lets you be a little more creative. 
I don't know about all of you, but I'm tired of seeing the same old methods and techniques online. We did some of those same techniques and methods here, but we also changed it up a bit to make it more interesting and fun. Lining is still one of my favorite parts, and using a mixture of washes and the ink slash paint really turned out well. There you have it folks, how to paint and wire a light up comic book style space marine. Overall this wasn't so bad, but it was very time consuming. Between the added time for the wiring and taking so much time with outlining of details, it really does add up. This many took about a full day on and off of work for me, but you know what, it was totally worth it. So what did you think? Do you like the end product and tutorial? Please let me know. I keep all my videos and contents for free. If you'd like to support me in my mini and 3D printing hobby, please go to my Patreon page and help me out. I'm currently making a net negative having to pay for my 3D modeling store and all the equipment I use. I thank all of my current patrons and supporters out there as they're a big part to keep me going. Also, thank you for watching.